What's up, family? Fashion designer Kay Spade was found and pronounced dead at a Park Avenue apartment on Tuesday morning. Law enforcement officials say that it appears to be an apparent suicide and that she was found by members of her housekeeping staff hanging in her apartment. She left a suicide note and her husband was at the scene. Most people could care less about a woman who offed herself who seemingly had everything. She had money, fame, power, influence, and she knocked herself off. She made a permanent decision based on a temporary emotion. That is the heart of this video because a lot of us have been there. Some went all the way there like she did, according to the police reports. Now, that's still in the air a little bit because the husband was there on the scene. She hung herself. They were going through a split. That could also justify her mindset. Like, you know, I'm going through this split. I can't take it. My business is struggling, you know. But anyway, y'all check out the video. Leave your comments and I'll come back with mine. Her brand was iconic, full of color, with simple shapes. But today, the website that bears Kate Spade's name has this dark greeting for visitors announcing the death of the company's founder. Her body, along with a note, were discovered by her housekeeper at her Park Avenue apartment this morning. Kate Spade was just 55 years old. She was a wife and a mother to a 13-year-old girl. Sandy Kenyon is live this afternoon at one of the city's most popular Kate Spade stores, but we're going to begin with Ivan News reporter Lauren Glassberg. She is at Spade's Upper East Side apartment with the developing details. Lauren. Well, Liz, the medical examiner removed Kate Spade's body about two hours ago, and New Yorkers are saddened to learn of her death and the fact that she took her own life. I think it's so tragic. Um, I was a huge fan. Kate Spade was one of the first bags that I wanted to buy, the first bag that I bought with my own money, um, and I still wear her today. This was the first designer bag I bought when I was 13 years old, so... I felt like I needed to come over here and give my condolences. That's why they stopped by 850 Park Avenue when they heard that Kate Spade, the 55-year-old fashion designer, had killed herself, dead after hanging herself with a red scarf believed to be of her own design, attached to a bedroom doorknob, according to police. They say her housekeeper found her body this morning and notified authorities. The medical examiner removed her body at around 2 this afternoon. At this point, there was a note left. Uh, the contents of that note, as well as uh, the physical state of the apartment and the comments of the witness uh, lend to the credibility that uh, it is an apparent suicide. Her husband of 24 years, Andy Spade, spoke with police at the couple's apartment, according to authorities. Spade's newest venture, which she launched two years ago, is called Francis Valentine, named for the couple's 13-year-old daughter, Frances. And even though Kate Spade was no longer affiliated with her eponymous brand, which she launched in 1993, she was forever connected to those handbags. She is a classic, modern American designer. Um, that, uh, I don't, I'm just, I'm in shock. I, I'm speechless. An autopsy will be performed, even though police say it is apparent that Spade committed suicide. And in a statement, the family said they are devastated in that, quote, we loved Kate dearly and will miss her terribly. They are asking for their privacy. Live on the Upper East Side, Lauren Glassberg, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. What do y'all think? First of all, do y'all think the husband had anything to do with it? Maybe, maybe not. Let's go with the narrative that she did indeed hang herself because I see this as a teachable moment. A lot of people are committing suicide from all walks of life. People are just not exhibiting good coping skills 
when it comes to rejection or disappointment. People are just like, you know what? I don't want to live anymore. All of these things that we go through in life, these challenges that we face, they're temporary. And once you get that in your mind, you're going to be good. Once you get into your mind that life is not supposed to be easy, you're going to be all right. Because most of us, we wake up and we think that life is supposed to be easy. We think that everything is supposed to be easy. We're not supposed to have these difficulties. We're not supposed to have setbacks. We're not supposed to struggle. And when we do, we lose it. She was 55 years old. She was still a young woman. And she killed herself. Uh, they're saying that, you know, the reason that they think that she did it is because of the idea that her sales were down and she was going through a split with her husband. Now, people do commit suicide under these type of circumstances all the time. When business is bad and on top of that, you having uh, problems with your spouse. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times, you can have bad business. Business can be very bad. But if you got a spouse riding with you, man, you can make it through some stuff. If you got that person that was there, still there, y'all going through the struggle together, that person that was there when everything was good, now everything is bad and they bouncing. Sometimes that does throw people over the edge. And they can't, they can't come back from it. But when you got somebody riding with you, I've noticed that people uh, recover a lot quicker. But if they lose their, their grip on their finances and they lose their grip on their relationship, at the same time, oh man, it can be devastating. So that's where the coping skills come in and having the understanding that all of these things are temporary. God could probably be moving that person out of the way to make room for somebody better in your life. He could be moving that business out of the way so that you can go into another business or so that you can take inventory of uh, your business practices in order to make your business even better. You know, sometimes you got to, you know, got to put you on your ass a little bit, right? Before you can stand up and you can actually see clearly. You know, sometimes chaos causes us to become lucid. So I know in my own career, my own life has been up and down. I've had pitfalls and, you know, I've had triumphs and I just know, I just learned to take my bitter with my sweet, know that even when everything is going great for me, trouble could be around the corner. Something bad could be around the corner. I'm not paranoid to the extent where I'm just waiting on something bad to happen. That's not what I do. But I know that bad things will happen. So when they happen, I'm able to deal with them better. Because I deal with bad things like, come on, motherfucker, I'm ready. You know, oh, you got the wrong, you got the right one today. You picked the right one today. That's how I deal with it. I'm like... You know, I ain't no pain freak. I ain't looking forward to the bad shit, but I know it's going to happen. So my mentality is, when it does, I'm going to deal with it. Whatever it is, I'm going to deal with it, and I'm going to win at the end. That's the way I rock. So, if this message reaches you today, man, take it and run with it. 
like embrace it, embrace the, the struggle, not hope for the struggle, just embrace it and you can deal with it better when you know that it's not supposed to be easy. It's really sad to see people who experience hardship, uh, they're going through some things and they feel that suicide is the only solution. Suicide, in my opinion, should always be the last solution. In fact, it's never a solution unless you're terminally ill. If somebody's terminally ill and they're trying, they're just tired of being in pain, I can't blame them. But all of this other stuff, she, he broke up, I'm uh, having financial issues, somebody's talking about me, people picking on me. No, no. That stuff is temporary. All of that is temporary. You can get through it. I guarantee you. I'm telling you from experience. Not just my experience. I've seen other people do the same exact thing and get through it. I'll leave you with this. This is an example of why you shouldn't chase happiness. You should be happy. And what I mean by that is that some people think that if they get money, if they get the girl, they get the guy, they'll be happy. If they get the car, they'll be happy. When happiness comes from within, you, you can find things that make you happy should never be monetary. You dig what I'm saying? Because that's internal happiness. Like, things that make me happy are like helping people, being a service, seeing a smile on people's faces, stuff like that, you know. That's something I can have. I can have that emotion no matter where I am in life, no matter what my lot in life is. I can always be happy. Satisfied? No, you know, I still got to get out there and grind, you know. I, yeah, I like nice stuff, you know, but just having a car, and I've had the nicest car and wasn't happy. I've had the mansion and wasn't happy. So I'm telling you, uh, get your money, get your bag, but money can't buy you happiness. And Case phase suicide is a further illustration of that. Don't let a moment stop your movement. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?